Hello, everybody. Welcome to Link Live. Yes, I know our videos are not on yet. You are at the correct place. This is Marina Mayer, Editor in Chief of Food Logistics and Supply and Demand Chain Executive. We are dressed in our Halloween costumes and we have not seen each other yet. So we want you to participate in the element of surprise with us. So that is why we don't have our videos on. But I am here with my team. If you want to go around the room. I'm Brielle Jekyll. I'm the Associate Editor. <laughs> so dumb. I know this is so weird. Just keep going. And I am McKenna Morales and I am the assistant editor. And we are ready for the big reveal because we love Halloween and we are very excited about this episode. And so whenever you guys are ready, we can turn on our videos. Okay. One, one, two, three. Where'd my hat go? <laughs> I lost my hat. Oh my Probably God. because my sign fell down. Hopefully John's not watching. He's gonna be like, where's my sign? Yeah, the sign fell. Oh my God, I love it. Look at you guys. Okay, I can't so, see. Clearly, I'm sorry, McKenna. <laughs> so clearly I'm a off. witch. Brielle is from Star Wars. <laughs> and McKenna is the house from up. Don't fly away on us, please. Hi. <laughs> However, Brielle has this gigantic mic in front of her face, so she looks like she's going to sing us a song or something. Um, I will not say that I may have been singing into it to test it out <laughs> when I first got it. Oh my God, I love it. So I lost my cape. Well, I can't find my cape. So I'm going to do some hat changes throughout and some wig changes to keep it, keep it going. <laughs> So, um, so welcome everybody. Um, this is Link Live. And yesterday was our SEN Summit on professional development. And oh my gosh, these speakers were great with, with such great information. I was so blessed to have them be a part of our program yesterday. Um, so if you want to view that one registration link, all four sessions, the on demand will be online later, later this week. So all you have to do is register and it goes directly into your inbox. I'm just so excited. Also, Register for our Future of the Supply Chains Week, which takes place November 30th through December 4th. We're covering warehousing, transportation, cannabis procurement, and supply chain visibility. So excited. So again, you can register for one, you can register for two, you can register for all. So it'd be very exciting. Also, sorry, go to supplychainnetworkmediakit.com. You can download our print and digital ed editorial calendars for 2021 for both publications. And make sure you get those nominations in for Food Logistics Rock Stars of the Supply Chain, which closes November 20th, and Supply and Demand Chain Executives Pros to Know, which closes December 4th. I've already started to see, to see some submissions come through, so I'm very, very excited. And before we dive in, somebody on our team has some news to share. Hey! <laughs> Woo! Yay! The house is lovable. <laughs> Oh my god, I lost my hat again. Here, I'll just do another hat change. Oh my god. <laughs> like crying. Here, you know what? This one looks better. By the way, I may have to return this wig because I don't think it looks much different than my regular hair. It really doesn't. It took me a second to realize that you were wearing- I mean, it's, I didn't even put my regular hair up. It's an ugly. <laughs> well, please so. tell us the reverse logistics process of returning a wig. Yes. Yeah, yeah well, I kept all the packaging, so we'll- We'll see. If I have to end up keeping it, I'm sure somebody will use it. I have no idea why you can't see my nose, but um, oh well. Can you guys see my nose? No. That's so weird. It's the brightness. Oh, oh maybe. Yeah. Maybe I'll just turn it off. Okay. So let's talk supply chain for the holidays. There we go. Um, I know we have some stuff cooking on our websites. I don't know who wants to kick it off with, um, I know we have some great statistics. I know Brielle, you've been covering some stuff. McKenna, you've been covering some stuff. I know this, these poor supply chains have been stretched as it is. And now we're going into the holidays and Prime Day got pushed up um, or pushed back from the middle of summer to now, but then you know everybody's shopping online for the holidays. So kind of ladies, what are you, what are you kind of seeing? Um, let me fix my hat. Um, what are you, what are you seeing online? 
Do you want me to go? Yeah, either of you. <laughs> <laughs> can you hear me? Yes. We can hear you. Um, when the pandemic first started, it was like Black Friday times 13 for the supply chain and just logistics in general as so many people were shopping online and they had their pandemic purchases. That's the tree that I bought. <laughs> Your yep. pandemic purchase. Oh, I remember you telling me about that. Yeah, so that was my pandemic purchase. But but our e-commerce is only our logistics is only gonna get more stressed out during the holiday season as well, because more people are gonna shop online because more people are getting more comfortable with it, which means that I'm too short for this. Are those balloons attached to your hair? No, I have a headband on. But oh, because it, it looks like, yeah, it looks like they're like clipped to your hair. Yeah, I have they a headband attached to a headband and then I have a headband on. Gotcha. Okay. But, um, That's so cute. Okay. But that means as more people get more comfortable online, they're going to continue to buy bigger and bulkier items, which is going to put a huge strain on last mile delivery. So it's like basically a lot of supply chains are warning customers to be prepared for your packages to be delivered late. Like there is a, right. like H&M currently has a notice on their website that says that expect a 10 day delay for when your order ships out. Mm -hmm. So I wanna talk a little bit about Halloween um, because I think it's really interesting. Um, I know that in the beginning it was a little rough. I mean, it wasn't anything too crazy, but um, Obviously, the Halloween stores and the, the retail stores prep for Halloween in the spring or like a year in advance. But right when everyone's really, you know, getting ready for Halloween for this year, it's like it is when the virus was really bad in China, where a lot of the vendors are from. So all these costumes and decorations and stuff like that, they did get a little behind, but I think um, it seemed to ended up being okay because I guess, you know, things got a lot better. Um, but I think it's interesting because you can see in the stores, like you were saying, McKenna, retailers are trying to stretch out the holiday season. And I was a little disappointed because I love, I start Halloween Labor Day. Like that's pretty much how I am with fall, but I don't really get start really buying the the real Halloween stuff until like the second week or third week of October when I'm like prepping for like a party or something like that. So now we're going out to look at for decorations and stuff and there's no Halloween stuff anywhere. Mm -hmm. Target was cleared. Um, all these retailers were cleared, Home Depot. And it wasn't because I assumed it was a lack of inventory because of the coronavirus, but it wasn't. They're prepping for Christmas so early that they're taking all the Halloween, they're letting all the Halloween stuff sell out and then they're setting up Christmas already, which, right. you know, retailers are always setting up for Christmas right. early, but this is extreme. Well, and it's crazy because I always like to go like the weekend before when stuff is really, really marked yes. down and stock up for like even like the next year stuff and um yeah you can't do that you can't do that anywhere even online stuff is selling out really quick i mean i'm just glad i got my kids costumes when i did because i would definitely not be winning any mother of the year awards <laughs> but i do have a couple of fun stats so halloween is definitely on this year it is not canceled it's on a saturday so everyone's very excited i mean we're obviously doing it in different ways and socially okay. distanced ways you know, um, but 66% are saying that they're still going trick or treating or mm -hmm. handing out candy. Mm -hmm. And I think candy sales are up 13% for Halloween. So that's really exciting. Um, and then 74% uh, of millennial moms and young parents say that Halloween is more important than ever because we need something to do. We need right. something to look forward to. Mm -hmm. No, I agree. We do. And it's, and it's an easy holiday to, you know, especially for the kids, but it's not such for kids. I mean, look at us. I mean, we all love Halloween equally. And I was, I bought costumes regardless. I was like, well, even if we just walk around our house, you know, we got to take our family pictures, you know, and this and that. And I even got costumes for the dogs because I'm a crazy dog person like that. 
So I always get costumes for my dogs. It's easy. You have to send pictures of what the what your dogs are like. We have to post pictures of them. All of our dogs. Oh yeah, McKenna got a new dog too. So she's been very busy this past week. Yeah, he's just but like... <laughs> you have a costume for him? Like Kevin. No. He oh, he could have been Kevin. Oh, uh, Tetsu, get up. He literally is. He's he looking at me like, no. <laughs> Oh my God, I love it. Yeah, we need to share dog costumes like on this thread. Yeah. So. Okay. Um, but then going back to the holiday shopping, sorry for interrupting, Marina. No, you're fine. But 66, according to this Oracle survey that just came out on Monday that is currently on sccexec.com, um, 66, per, I get it, you're tired. But 66% of respondents prefer home delivery and 18% will buy online and pick up in store, while only 16% will buy online and pick up curbside. Hmm. And I thought that was very interesting. That is interesting. As well. But then in the survey, they also talk about that malls are still going to be successful, even though there's a pandemic going on. And that... 18% of shoppers still feel safest in an indoor mall, 20% in outdoor shopping venues, so like an outlet mall or something like that. And then 58% were fine with either with either if they had the safe, safety precautions, but 79% that it was said it was important for them to see staff and other customers wearing masks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I have a couple of friends who work in malls and they said that they're like packed. Because I think people go there just to get out of the house, yeah. you know, and they bring their families and they just kind of walk around whether they're shopping or not. But mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, masks would be preferred, so. Yeah. And like, I went to a mall last week with my mom and we are masked up and there was people shopping and like every store that we went to, there's still the people at like the center kiosks that are kind of give you hand massages, but people are doing it. Yeah. Well, now, are people, sorry, continue. <laughs> that's another reason why they wanted retailers starting the holiday season so early, in addition to wanting to stretch it out because people are looking forward, are, are nervous about shipping and things like that. It's also because they want to make back all the money from the times that they were closed or limited amount and like not right. having a lot of people. So they're really trying to, you know, get those revenue dollars up. Everyone's hurting right now. So right. yeah. The long wait times do make me nervous. I understand why people are Christmas shopping right now. I'm not nervous about long wait times because I'm still, like, I bought all my Halloween decorations, like, last minute, and uh, they came mm. right away. Yeah, I think it just depends. And, and, I mean, I don't know who else is shopping for Halloween right now or if they've already moved on. I mean, I don't know. I think it just depends. I think, I think the pandemic kind of prepared companies a little bit better. So maybe they have all their ducks in a row a little bit more, um, hopefully. Um, yeah, I'd be curious inside these stores, did you see people trying on clothes or anything? Like were people doing that? Some fitting rooms were open. It like depends on the store. Like I think Target has all their fitting rooms closed. I know like, Old Navy does. I just like was the, curious. Like Target the big names are okay. closed. And then, um, but I went to the mall, I went to Express when I was shopping for a wedding like outfit um, and their fitting rooms were open, thank God. Yeah, cause how do you, I mean, there's just some things you need to try on. You can't just yeah, like that day have I to try on things. So I was so happy that it was open because I would have been screwed if they, if they didn't let me try it on cause I'm not close to the mall. But like Target, I don't mind because it's right here and it's Target, right. you know, it's different. Right. Also curious to see how Black Friday is going to change this year or just like that entire shopping weekend because all these big named retailers are closing on Thanksgiving. I know. Right. Which finally. I mean, yeah, they, they, they need to. I mean, both of my parents work in retail and I, I, it's very few Thanksgivings where we've all been together under the same roof. Mm -hmm. um because they're usually having to go in it like right after you finish dinner and then they're working overnight um yeah. so now they're off but yeah then like the actual day you know they have to limit 
how many people they can have in the store. You know, you can't have people lined up, obviously, out there like they usually do. Um, people would camp out. I know. Uh, if, you, if you look at sdcexec.com, I recently published an article about um, other retailers adopting like their own Black Fridays. Obviously, everyone knows Prime Day, but they did Prime Day like super early in October this year. Um, and then other retailers are kind of following suit like Walmart and Target. And like you said, McKenna, doing that, I mean, obviously they all want their own like days, but it also kind of helps the supply chain starting it so early because now we're having people like, like we keep saying this episode, people are shopping earlier and it's stretching out more. So instead of that tight pressure on the logistics process in just two months or a month, it's now three months, which can right. be a lot. And like we were saying before, with all of the um, measures put in place because of COVID, I mean, I talked to multiple logistics uh, companies that had to hire hundreds and thousands of new employees just to handle the shipping and the logistics process when COVID and quarantine first happened. So they must be much more prepared now. So it might be an actually really easy season for shopping. So who knows? Just circling back to our SCN summit yesterday, one of the, I'm sorry, I can't remember which one, but one of them said that when you're looking for new employees, the new employees want like that flexibility and they want to work for a company that cares about them. And now with, unfortunately, COVID had to kind of prove that, but now that companies are closing down on Thanksgiving, it shows that like all these companies do care. You might've missed out on your holiday with your families for like the last several right. years, but you get, you get to now. And I think it'll stay like that in the future. I'm sure they'll get really good feedback from it. Yeah. Well, I think that was long overdue. I mean, they kept, I mean, even last year it was, the stores just kept opening up earlier and earlier. So instead of it being like at midnight, then it was at like 7 p.m. And then it was at 6 p.m. And those workers, you know, they don't go there just at the time that they start. I mean, my dad would have to go in at like three in the afternoon to get set up. Well, that's the whole day. Like you can't, we you have Thanksgiving breakfast, you know? Right. So, and he doesn't, you know, at that point they're so exhausted, nobody wants to leave and like do anything and get together and entertain. So yeah, you lose like that whole day, but I am, you know, glad that they're, they're trying to, to do that, especially with these essential workers who have been working a lot more hours um, and, and, you know, have had to reshift how they do things. So, but the flip side is now we can't have these big Thanksgiving gatherings either. Yeah. So it's like, that's great that we could get together, but it's only like, very small gatherings for a certain amount of time. And um, so, I mean, that's how it is in Illinois. I don't know how it is where you guys live, but it's, it's they're, they're cutting back on things. Back to the Thanksgiving conversation about working. So I'm working. I'm, <laughs> this I'm, is so funny to me. I'm sorry. I know. I'm trying not to laugh. I could do this. Okay. So uh, I'm working on finishing up the sustainability story, which is our cover story for our um, upcoming SDC ex exec issue. And McKenna, stop it. And, <laughs> it together. and a, a huge part of sustainability is, you know, treating your employees ethically. Um, it's yes. not just about um, being eco-friendly. Um, and paying attention to your carbon footprint. But I think that's a huge, I think it goes with that trend, you know, can't shutting down for Thanksgiving, giving that time back to your employees. It's important. Well, and yesterday they all kind of touched on that because, you know, they were all talking right. about, you know, not just how to train, you know, new employees, but the employees that you currently have, you know, they've weathered the storm with you. They've stuck around. You know, they want to obviously be a part of your organization. Um, but then even, you know, they talked about the younger generation, the millennials and the generation Zs and how, you know, this is how they view the future, their career. And, you know, companies kind of have to take notice, you know, when you need a mission, you need to follow through on a mission, you need to represent, you need to be a part of something, you need to be something, you know. Um, 
is going to really affect like future professionals, especially the kids that are currently in college, because they're going to see these companies when they're applying and they're probably going to be like, how did you treat your employees during the COVID-19 pandemic? Right. And as they say, like, we laid them off and then we never told them when they were coming back. That's going to be a huge deal to people. Yeah. Well, it is a huge deal because you want to take care of those people. And I mean, we've been fortunate. We've all, you know, been able to weather the storm together and, and grow our brands and be innovative. And um, so is our company. And so, you know, there's ways to do it. I think people just need to buckle down. And then we talked about like sustainability, you know, sustainability, I thought for sure would have gone to the wayside when the pandemic hit. And every time we do a link live or Brielle conducts a podcast on link, or we talk to somebody on SCN summit, it's the opposite. They're like, no, sustainability is everything. And then you go online onto foodlogistics.com or stcexec.com and you read sustainable stories of companies that are still forging ahead with their sustainability initiative, um, which is fabulous. So, I mean, there's a lot to learn from a pandemic like this. If companies, I'm things. excited to see how the how packaging is going to be now during Black Friday and the holiday. Mm -hmm. and if they're really going to like sh do these sustainable things that they have been talking about yeah I mean I know Target lets you ship in less packaging like they let you save a dollar if you ship in less packaging if you don't want it all at once um, I'd be curious to see what other companies are doing but speaking of that um, I believe November, December-ish, Brielle and McKenna are launching a new initiative on foodlogistics.com and sdcexec.com called Unboxing the Last Mile. And it's a video series of them going through the whole logistics of purchasing online, getting the shipment, how long it takes, what the packaging looks like, um, you know, customer service, kind of analyzing the whole supply chain process and so very, very excited for that. So keep an eye out for that. Um, I say November, December-ish because I don't have my notes. So. Our upcoming, epi our pilot episode will include an interview with DHL. So we'll have oh. some insight as well. Perfect. So very, very, very exciting stuff. So um, don't forget to get your um, nominations in. Those, those deadlines are closing in and you don't want to miss it. Um, we're very excited for those. Sorry, I'm looking for my other notes. Um, next week's link live, we're talking about sourcing, procurement, and offshoring amid a pandemic. And this is key because it is during election week. So um, this is a very core topic that's hitting both sides. So um, we'll be talking to John Skenapieko, the director of Baker, Baker Donaldson, Beerman, Caldwell, and Berkowitz. Um, so be sure to, to tune into that. And every time, every Wednesday at 11 a.m. Central, check back. We do have a schedule of upcoming um, guests that we have and upcoming topics. So be sure to follow us on all of our social media channels so you can be in, you know, be in the know. Um, what else am I forgetting? And subscribe to Link on the Apple, Google, and Spotify podcast apps. Yes. And Brielle see. is busy. She is scheduled all the way through February of 2021, guys. That's how that's how hot this channel is right now. So make sure you download it and you can stay in the know. McKenna. And please apply for the pros to know and the Rockstars Award. We're not extending the deadline. So please We're not nominations in. Yeah. So um, that's it. Hopefully you enjoyed our Halloween edition. I know I thought this was fun. Um, we just love to have a good time. Oh yes, we got to get the full the full view. You don't need to see mine because I don't have my cape and it's just my hair. So, um, and oh my God, I love it. And if I stand up, my hat's going to fall off again. Here, I'll just use my arm to fix it. Okay. Sorry, I found this underneath. My kids like to prank me. So this was underneath our sink in the bathroom, like underneath the, like by the toilet. So when you walk in, there's just a hand sticking out. So welcome, <laughs> welcome to my house. Oh, I was gonna also wear this wig, wig later. Yeah. yeah kind of really quick. This is my disco days. Wear that to our happy hour next week. <laughs> yeah, I will, don't tell, don't tell the guys. 
See if they notice. <laughs> okay, everybody. This was Link Live. McKenna's engaged. And we will see you next Wednesday at 11 a.m. Central, foodlogistics.com, secexec.com. We'll see you there. Thanks, ladies. Happy Halloween.